Colm and Cleona, very welcome to the show. First of all, I need to ask you on a more personal level, you've worked together <laughs> on this as producer and director. How are you still together after an epic project like on Colin Cuin? I mean, how is it like working as a wife and husband team? Oh, it's, it's, yeah, pretty intense at times, but it's, it's lovely as well, you know? But I, I think the fact that we've survived uh, making a feature film together, you know, you can survive be, anything. Yeah. yeah, get to actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we yeah. actually met. We met working. Like, that's how we met originally. Yeah. back in 2009, wasn't it? Yeah. On a TG Car program, we were working on. Yeah, we've so always tell had us, that dynamic. Tell us about the movie because it's no mean feat getting a movie made these days in terms of raising finance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Tell us how how the idea began. First of all, the inspiration, the book, and and how it came together. Well, it was 2018, and um, I was looking for material to uh, to adapt for to make an Irish language film because there was this new scheme had been launched by Gigi Cahar and Screen Ireland and the BAI called Cine Cahar, and they were they were they wanted to make Irish language feature films, and and I was looking for something that would be adaptable, and I, I stumbled across Claire Keegan's wonderful novella Foster, and by the end of having read that, I was like in tears, and like yeah. I was just had this like burning desire to make it, you know, and I was really kind of panicking about, well, are the rights available? Can, can we get this over the line? And um, so, yeah, that's kind of how it happened. And then I remember I went out to you and I just, you were in the back garden. I think at the time I was just like, we need to, we need to make So what this. was was the first approach, the first step in think, approach the author and say, look, can we do it? And then how do you adapt it then into a screenplay? Yeah, well, that was, yeah, that was the first step, wasn't it? It was like, it was, at, at, at that point, like as, you know, we, this is our first time making a feature-length film, wow. so and the first time adapting any sort of, you know, pre-existing literary work, right, like that. So I had to ring up another producer and go, "How do you do this? Like, <laughs> like what's one of the, the steps here?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So anyway, we just got in touch with her, uh, Claire's agent, and um, I had to kind of put together like a pitch of what yeah. we wanted to do and all that. And she very graciously and very kindly, uh, you know allowed us to, to run with it, you know. What was it wow. about this particular story that touched you so much? Um, I mean, could you, you obviously could almost picture it straight away in your head the way you wanted it to be. What, what was it about? Because it's, it's not your typical beginning, middle end story per se. It's very unusual. Yeah, like there's not much of a plot. Like the plot, for anyone who's read Foster, and I'm sure a lot of people have, because uh, it was on the Leaving Cert syllabus, so there's a lot of Irish people who would be very familiar with it, but um, it's very, you could, you could describe the plot as like young girl gets sent away for the summer yeah. to live with relatives and comes home. And like that's, yeah, that's the plot. It. Pretty much yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So actually the film's not about plot really. It's actually about all the character dynamics yeah. and uh, and the emotion of it, you know? Um, and that's what that's what's, what stayed with me was just this sort of undertow of emotion in Claire's original work was just so powerful. And it felt so Irish and so relatable and real and, authentic, you know, and I just I just felt like it was a lovely challenge to try and do something like that in a film, you know. When you do something through Irish, though, there's, oh, I mean, traditionally, any sort of so-called foreign language film, even here in Ireland, never mind uh, getting used to our own language, if you're like, French adaptations, German, whatever, um, it hasn't tradition. There's almost a mental block against it, but do you think that maybe with the, the, the advent of streaming, sir, uh, um, services if we look like um, Squid Game in Netflix. I mean, that was massive. And the fact that we don't care, audiences don't care about the mm. language barrier and it took something like that for the world and the industry to see it. Do you think that helps the, the cause here? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, subtitles are kind of normalised now, you know, yeah. through all the streaming services. And I think, like, if the story is good enough, it will just transcend language, you know? So I think, uh, you know, if there's a quality film there to watch, people will go to see it. And I think that's what happened with Uncalling Kuhn, you know? Just, just well, it had a huge, got a huge profile, I suppose, after it were, had its world premiere in Berlin. And then, you know, it opened the Verdun Media Dublin International Film Festival mm. and then all the IFTAs and everything. So it just created this huge... Huge buzz. There was such buzz about the film. Did you have any idea, Cleona, when when you had the film finished, you'd done the hard bit, which was get it financed, get it made, it's done. You see what Colm's done with it, you're working together and yet it's all that, it's done. Did it surprise you the reaction or did you know when you sat down and watched that screen and you thought, no, we've something special on our hands here? Yeah, I think when it was finished, we both were like well, that's, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's good, it you know, yeah. but you really don't know how no. people are going to react to it until 
they see it. And I think the first experience of that was like we had our cast and crew screening last year, late last year. And, you know, the reaction from that was just kind of really, you know, we couldn't even sleep that night. We were yeah. on a high just from, from everybody yeah. saying. But when you have somebody, I mean, when you discover a talent like Catherine Clinch, oh. I mean, she is an incredible talent. I mean, young Saoirse Ronan springs to mind when you look at her work. I mean, she, she has that sort of face that you're just, she says nothing and says everything, but with mm. just an expression. Um, what was it like nurturing a talent like that? I mean, we just feel blessed, really, that we, we found her, you know, she was... She was How did you find her? It was seven months of looking, wasn't it? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did lots of physical auditions all across Munster because we were originally looking down there for a young actor with Munster dialect because the story is set in on Ryan in yeah. County Waterford, you know. And uh, eventually it just came about through self-tape because COVID had hit and we had put a call out for audition tapes to be sent to us and, and thankfully she was one of them, you know. That did you know through. when you saw it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I watched it and I was just blown away by that. She was just perfect, just from that that original yeah. take. And I rang you, and I was like, "Colin, yeah. we you have got her. We, we wouldn't yeah. be sitting here only for Catherine <laughs> Clinch. Like the whole yeah. film rests on Clinch her shoulders. On like she's in, as Claire, Claire's book even is written from the girl's point of view. Yeah. So it's all through her eyes. So the film is the same, you know. And that comes across with you know when you read the reviews, she's singled out, and the movie. In terms of the reviews, now we're getting into. Silly season now in terms of the, the Academy Awards, but the campaign for you guys starts now. Talk us through what, what news was announced last week and what happens from here on in, because it's not, you know, it's not a done deal. What happens now, yeah. Cleona? So basically, IFTA last on <clears throat> Wednesday just announced the Irish selection, which is on Colin Kuhn. And so now that our film is going to be submitted to the Academy. And the, in a particular category. In yeah. a particular category, in, in the best international film category. And then the, the International Film Committee of the Academy will then watch all the films, so there's you know, up to 100 films. I think there was 93 last year. From all around the world. All around the yeah. world. And they will shortlist 15 films. In December. In December. On right. December 21st, we'll find out what 15 films wow. are. And then all Academy, like this 9,000 Academy members, they will then uh, opt in to, to watch the, the So the films. next step for you guys is that date, this is the 21st of December. That's yeah. where you know whether you're going forward or it ends there. Yeah. But in terms of getting because we always hear this when it comes to the turn of the year and into December and January, we hear about the big blockbusters, our Oscar favourites, our juggernauts, that the campaigning starts very early. Do you guys have to be on that now in terms of getting the word out to those American voters in the Academy? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. You know, we're, we're on the verge of um, doing a deal with a US distributor and that'll be key, you know, wow, in terms yeah, of yeah. actually just getting the film out there, especially in the States, and, and getting the film before Academy members. So we'll we'll work with an award strategist and a publicist to try and target all those Academy voters in order to get them to, to watch our film. And, you know, like they... There's nine, over 90 films to watch, yeah. so you really have to make a lot of noise about your film in order to get to stand attention. Out. Yeah. Yeah. But, how, but how important will it be for, well, for the Irish film industry, but particularly for our native tongue, for the movie to, to go across the world? Huge. Well, it'd be huge, you know. I mean, even, even if we make the shortlist in December of 15 yeah. films, that would be the first time an Irish language film has ever done that. Wow. And the second time that an Irish film has ever done it. Uh, Viva did it a few years ago, yeah, the yeah. Paddy Brannock film. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's it's vindication of the of the vision that T.G. Garr and Screen Ireland, the BAI, BAI had um, when they set up the scheme. Like they yeah. they wanted to create a kind of wave of Irish language cinema, and they believed that there was an appetite for it, and that you could produce world class work. Uh, and you've ticked, you've ticked every box. Yeah. Yeah. And as native Irish speakers, you must be absolutely thrilled with this. I mean, yeah. This is the, 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 the ultimate aim for anyone in your position to have your work literally on the international stage. Yeah. Now it's amazing. Well, listen, congratulations so far. We'll keep everything crossed. They're going to be Banjacks the next time we see them. They're all quiet <laughs> and reserved. Now you're really on the trail now to make it big. It's going to be an amazing few months for Thank you. Thank you for Good coming in, ahead. Thanks. Really Thanks. appreciate Thank you it. So you can much. still find on Colleen Cohen in selected cinemas across the country. Go and see it. You won't regret it.